In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a lithophane. Lithophanes date back several hundred years when they were either first molded or handcrafted in porcelain and other translucent materials. Lithophanes are relief images that we cut into materials like corian and certain plastics that can only be seen clearly when backlit with a light source. It works by varying the heights of the image so that in the dark areas there's more material than there are in the lighter areas. Ultimately, when backlit, the grayscale image can be seen. Let's walk you through the process of creating one of these for yourself. Okay, to start off, we're going to need to create a new file. And for this particular job, it's going to be a single-sided job. The width of our job is going to be 8 inches, and then we're going to make our height 10 inches, and our thickness, because we're going to be cutting this into corian, then corian typically comes in a quarter inch thick pieces. So we're going to go ahead and assume that. Our units are going to be inches. Uh, we're going to zero off our material surface. And while we're setting up our file, we're going to set our XY datum to the center. We're going to change that later when it comes to creating our tool paths. We're going to make sure that we have a model or modeling resolution of very high. We want all the pixels that we can have in order to make this lithophane look as nice as we can. And instead of using a wooden material, we're actually going to go ahead and use a solid color and we're going to choose 25% gray. And this will give us a good sort of visual representation of what this lithophane will look like if it's cut in Corian. And we'll click OK. Now to start off, we're going to need to import in a bitmap. And there's several different ways we can do that. On the drawing tab, we could use the import bitmap. Or on the modeling tab, we can use the create a component from selected or imported bitmap. In this particular case, when you're creating a lithophane, you're probably going to want to be using this option here. That way, when it brings in the bitmap, it'll give you the best quality bitmap that we can have in our software and will allow us to create the nicest looking lithophane. So you'll see that when you hover over that, it says create a component from selected or imported bitmap. We don't actually have any selected bitmap. So as soon as we click that, it's going to open up our import dialog box here and we can go ahead and navigate over to our lithophane creation folder in our tutorials folder and find the charliechatlin.jpg. We're going to select that and we're going to import that in. Now to make this a little easier to visualize, let's go ahead and tile our views left and right. So you're going to see that our bitmap was imported into the top right hand side. That's because our datum is set to the center, so the center point is anchored right there. And then in our 3D view, the software's already created a relief model out of this bitmap for us. And we can kind of take a little look at that and we can see what it's done. Let's look back down, straight down this again. So we're going to want to center this in the middle of our job space or in the middle of our material. So let's select Charlie Chatlin and let's press F9 on the keyboard and that will center it. If you forget F9, then of course you can go ahead and use our Align Selected Objects tool. Now this isn't quite big enough for us, so we're going to need to make the image a bit, bit larger. So we're going to select that, and we're going to go over and we're going to use our Set Selected Object Size. Now we're going to use our Job Align box. We're also going to anchor it to the center, and we're going to make the image height 8.25. And we're going to hit apply. And because our link X and Y is checked, then everything is going to be scaled up appropriately. And also our auto Z scale is checked as well. So our thickness will be changed as well. So let's click apply and close that down. Now there we have it. This is the proper size that we want it to be for this particular job. And we're going to take a closer look at this 3D model that's created. So if we just take a little closer look and zoom in a bit, Right away, you're going to notice that something is wrong. In order for a lithophane to work, we need to have the light areas in our relief to be the lowest points and the dark areas to be the highest points because we're going to leave more material where it's dark and less where it's light. And here we have this outside white area is actually thicker than the black area. So we need to do something to fix that. And to do that, we're going to change the combine mode for our component. So over here in our component tree, in our modeling tab, you'll see that we have a Charlie Chaplin component. Right now it's set to add. Now we need to change that combine mode to be 
subtract. So we can do that a couple different ways. We can go into our component properties, or we can just right click on Charlie Chaplin, go over to combine mode and set that to subtract. Now our bitmap has been inverted. So we need to remember that, that now the black areas are, or the white areas are now black and the black areas are now white. But in our 3D view, you'll see that now the original white areas are thinner than the dark areas. And that's exactly what we want to see. Now also you'll probably notice that there's this translucent rectangle and that is our modeling plane. That's just a reference point for us to build models on. And currently our model is below that. So that's why you see it looking a bit hazy, but yet any of the component that touch the modeling plane are actually going to be the proper color. So if you find that confusing, what we can do is go up to view and we can turn off our modeling plane and then you'll see the model as it should be. But keep in mind that that modeling plane is there for a reason. If we're using components that are negative or underneath the modeling plane, like in a dish or something like that, then this is really handy because we can see if anything is actually above our modeling plane that might need to be corrected. So definitely it has its use, but for us right now, because we know it's all below or shares the modeling plane, then we can go ahead and hide that. Let's look back down on our relief again. Now we're going to need our rectangle because we want to limit our tooling to only a section of this so it fits nicely into a frame. So what we're going to do is go to our drawing tab and we're going to create a rectangle. We're going to make sure our datum is set to the center and our X and our Y are set to zero. We don't want any quarter radiuses, corner radiuses. We just want to have it square. And we would like to have the width of that be six inches and the height be eight inches. And we're going to click create. And we'll see that now we have in our 2D view, a rectangle box. And we're going to use that to limit our tooling. Now we have everything that we need to start creating our toolpath. So let's just go ahead and jump over to our toolpath tab. And let's retile our views just so we can show off this edge that's slightly hidden here. So as always, we're going to want to make sure that we check our material setup. So our thickness is a quarter inch. We're going to move our datum now to the bottom left corner. We're going to zero off our material surface. And then we want to pay important attention to the model position in our material. Typically we'd want it somewhere in the middle of the material somewhere or jammed right to the top. But in this case, actually we'd like to have a gap at the bottom. And that gap will define the, the minimum thickness that we have in our lithophane. And this will be determined by the material you're using, maybe the color you're using, how translucent it is, and, and how well the, the light will travel through it. So you'll have to change that to be what it was, works for your material. But for us, we're going to put in 0, 04. And that leaves a bit of material back here, which is great. And then we're going to want to set up our rapid Z gaps and our home start position that's safe and appropriate for our machine. And this all looks great, but let's make this a quarter inch here. And then we'll click OK. Now in order to cut this, we are going to actually use two different tool paths. We're going to use a roughing tool path and a finishing tool path. So let's set up our roughing tool path first. So in this particular case, we're going to want to use the same bit all the way through. So we don't need to do any tool changes. So the 1 8 inch ball nose and mill is fine. Let's just edit the parameters to make sure that everything is fine. This will temporarily edit this tool. Now I see that we have a step over of 40%, which is great. Now typically a ball nose end mill would be used for a finishing pass, but we're going to go ahead and use it for a roughing pass. And if we use a really strong step over, then what we'll end up having left behind is some ridges from our tool. And that's okay because we're going to go back and take those out when we do our finishing. So all this looks great. Let's just click OK. We're going to use a selected vector as our machining limit boundary. And it's selected here in our 2D view. And you can tell it is because it's dotted in pink. We don't want any boundary offset. And we're going to leave a very little bit of allowance behind. So a skin of material behind so that we can go back in with our finishing bit. And we can 
remove that. We're going to use Z-level roughing strategy along X, and this all looks great. No ramp plunge moves are required, and we're going to call this 3D roughing. And this is going to be a 0.125 ball nose end mill. We'll calculate that. And this just says the allowance that's left behind is greater than 20% of the tool diameter. We know that because we had, I pointed that I pointed out that I changed it to 40%. So that's why it's it's giving us this error. So we're just doing, we're gonna ignore that, but thank you for the error. Click okay. And then we're gonna go through and we'll have our roughing pass. Now, because we're not using Canadian maple, we may as well go ahead and look at this with our solid color again. We'll make sure that it's the 25% gray. We're gonna change this to material color. We don't wanna change our area color at all, our machined area color. And we're gonna preview our visible toolpath. Now this is the time where you want to check over your toolpath preview and make sure that it looks like what you were hoping to get. In this case, it looks exactly what I was hoping. I have those ridges I was talking about, but they're not going to matter because they'll be removed later. And that looks pretty good. So let's just go ahead now and create our finishing pass. We're going to select a different tool. We're going to go back to our 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. And you'll see that in my tool database, the step over for this is set to 10%. So that's perfect. We're going to select that. Actually, it's not so perfect. What I want to do is I want to change that to be 8%. I want to have a really nice finish on this or the best I can get. So 8% will do the trick. And let's just click OK. Again, we're going to use a limit of our vector in our 2D view to limit our tooling. No boundary offset. And we're going to want to use a raster machining strategy. We could use the offset strategy, but I'm going to choose to use the raster because this is Corian. And if there's any kind of tool marks left behind, it's going to be hard to remove. So I want the tool marks to look deliberate. So instead of going back and forth or up and down, I think I'm going to change my raster angle to be 45. And that will make any tool marks show up this way. And we'll actually add some interesting texture to the background, which I think will be kind of nice. And we're going to call this 3D finishing, and we'll make this 0.125 ball nose end mill. We'll calculate that. It'll also take a few minutes to calculate because it's a really dense tool path and it's a very small cutter. And there we have it. You can see it in our 3D view, and it is quite dense. But let's just go ahead and preview that. We're going to preview our visible tool path, and you'll see that it cleans up pretty nice. Now, if we look down on this, straight down, it's hard to visualize what this is going to look like when we're shining light behind it because our 3D preview doesn't work that way. But what we do have is a setting here called lithophane. So if we click this on, it is going to end up simulating what it would look like if we actually put a light source behind this lithophane and shone the light through. This is only a simulation, but it will give you a good idea of what it could look like in the end. So let's turn that on. And then we can use this slider to determine how much light is going to go through. And so you can figure out the point at which you get the best image that you or the best representation of this lithophane and i think this is a good setting for me and i can take a look at that and that's pretty neat it's going to look pretty close to that in the end now if we zoom in a little bit we're going to see that our image looks a little bit soft it's not as clearly defined as maybe we would like depending on the end use of this this, this detail could be could be fine um, and you know that 3D toolpaths take a long time to cut. So if we can minimize the time on the machine, the better that is. But that'll be up to you to decide. But right now, with the size of the cutter that we have, that's about the best detail we're going to get. But let's say we wanted to get a little bit more detail. Let's just go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's just look back straight down on this again. Let's go into our... Um, let's close down our preview toolpaths. We're going to duplicate this finishing pass by right clicking on it and go to duplicate. Double click on that duplicate. And then we're going to 
select a 1 16th inch ball nose end mill. So just by doing some simple math, this will take twice as long or potentially twice as long to cut as the original tool path we just looked at. We're going to change this down to 8%. Oh, we're not going to change that here, actually. We're going to leave that at 10. We're going to select that. We don't want to change the defaults. And we want to go here and edit here. And we want to change this to be 8%. And click OK. Everything else here is going to be perfectly fine, except for the name. So we may as well just go ahead and delete that. And we're going to change this to... 0625 and we'll recalculate this tool path. Now again it's a smaller tool, denser tool path. It's going to take a little bit longer for our software to actually calculate that tool path. But once it's done I think we'll be really super happy with the amount of detail that we're going to get if we don't mind it taking a bit longer to cut. Okay, now let's just go ahead and preview this toolpath. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna slow this down, our toolpath preview, and then we're gonna preview our visible toolpath. And what you're gonna see as the tool works its way up that we're gonna end up getting more detail as we go. So let's just go ahead and do that. And you'll see that as he gets close to his waistcoat here, you can see that those squares on his waistcoat are much more defined there's much more definition to it and also as we get up to his face we'll find that we're going to end up revealing a lot more detail that we didn't see before i'm just going to turn that speed back up again let it finish off and you can see that we get a much nicer picture in the end our lithophane looks really sharp but again we're getting a better lithophane but at the sacrifice of the part being longer on our machine. So you're going to want to come up with a balance that works best for you and the end product that you'd like to have. So let's close that down. And now like all of our demonstrations, we can go ahead and we can save off our toolpaths if we would like. Save those off, select the ones you'd like to, make sure that you choose the proper post processor for your particular machine. Save off those toolpaths where you can find them. And then also, for good measure, we're going to go ahead and we're going to save off our file. Okay, we're going to name this file Lithophane Creation Toolpath, and we're going to save it in the tutorial folder. Now this is going to finish up this demonstration. I hope you found it interesting and useful, and these lithophanes are fantastic, and it's a great way to show off how you can use your software to create a really interesting final result. There's nothing more exciting than seeing a lithophane unlit and then when you backlight it the look on the recipient's face is pretty darn amazing. So I hope that you cut some of these and try them out.